praise God, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, yes, he's worthy. All right, so we know the locks are out. Uh, Deacon Brown is out. Anybody heard from the Carters now? No, no sir. All right. I heard from them earlier. Bless the Lord. First Lady, she just had to go to the store. She'll be back. Amen. All right, so what we have been talking about is the origin of Easter. Mm -hmm. And what we've learned is that Christians aren't the only people who celebrated a season called Easter or a holiday called Easter. Mm -hmm. And so there was a pagan holiday also called Easter, but it was spelled I-S-H-T-A-R, but it's pronounced the same, Easter. And a lot of the things that was practiced in this pagan religion as we've been going through, uh, as we've been going through the study, we'll see that a lot of different things as far as the rituals, um, uh, a whole lot of things that has nothing to do with the Christian Easter or the resurrection of Christ at all. Mm -hmm. And so what we're learning is how did this stuff infiltrate the church? Mm -hmm. That's what I want to know. How did it infiltrate the church? And for so long, many of us have celebrated, you know, we've celebrated Easter, we were all about the rabbit, the eggs, the chocolate, you know, just don't make Peter sense. Cottontail, and rabbits don't make you know, we, it's so many different traditions that have entered into Christianity that a lot of things are accepted as being Christ-like when it's truly not Christ-like and it has nothing to do with Christ. And essentially, it has gotten to a point where uh, some churches actually worship the other things mm -hmm. rather than worshiping Jesus. Yeah. Gotta ask yourself a question. So I'm telling my kids that the Easter Bunny is bringing them this stuff, knowing that Jesus has blessed me mm -hmm. to be able to purchase my kids yeah. this stuff. Who am I giving the glory to? Jesus. I'm giving God's glory to the Easter Bunny. Yeah. Easter mm -hmm. To Peter Cottontail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he ain't worried. No, Peter Cottontail ain't worthy. Sure is. <laughs> Amen. He ain't worthy of my glory. You know what I mean? So we have to figure this, we have to figure out how this stuff infiltrated mm -hmm. the church. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Um, I've eaten some colored eggs. Mm -hmm. I've made I've made a lot of colored eggs in my time. I, I've, made, I've eaten some chocolate rabbits, and I need y'all to understand something. Chocolate is meant to be eaten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. 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 Eggs are meant to be eaten. Sure you're right. Yeah. I don't care if they got color on them, or they're white, or they're brown. Right. You know, when it comes to eggs. I don't segregate, I participate. <laughs> right. Amen. Protein. 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 Yeah. Amen. Protein. Yeah. Amen. So <laughs> So let's just keep up. Let's find out how this stuff infiltrated the church. Now last year, last week, we we got to, I think this is slide 15, where we were talking about Jeremiah 10. Yeah, we went a little bit past Jeremiah 10. But yeah, uh, because Jeremiah 10 was the thing that was talking about the, tr about the, the tree, how Tammuz, his yeah, blood, when he was right. killed by the pig, when he was killed by the pig, his blood spilled on the tree, uh, and it was a, um, what kind of tree? A pine tree? Let me get back up there. Is it Ezekiel 8? Yeah, it's, okay. I'm sorry, it's Ezekiel. Yeah, you had me lost it. Well, Jeremiah yeah, 10, no, Jeremiah 10, yeah. 3 through 4 talk about the evergreen tree. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're right about yeah. that. Yeah. So when the blood poured on his blood, when he was killed, his blood 
it spilled on the uh, evergreen tree. And so in the pagan religion of Easter, they see the evergreen tree as being a holy object, okay, because of his blood. And then we talk about it in Ezekiel, how Tammuz got killed right. by the pig right. because they tried to hate me. And the people were weak, they were weeping because Tammuz got killed. Well, you got to understand the things that was going on at this time at, in this place. You know, the, the Bible talk about the Nicolaitans, and it talks and it calls them the Hellenists also. You ever heard of that in the Bible? The, the, you ever heard of the doctrine of Nicolaitans? Well, this is what we're talking about. And this Babylonian or this pagan doctrine had entered the church and it started, and this was something that, that uh, Greeks had adopted. And once they adopted it, they started pushing it in the church. And you'll see how it got in there, okay? All right. So I guess we gotta go back up. Any questions so far about where we're at? What about Jeremiah's text? I'm sorry. What about Jeremiah? Jeremiah 10, 3 and 4, that's when I just got finished explaining about how the evergreen tree, how the blood stood on the evergreen tree, the blood of Tammuz, and so they made the tree a holy, a, a thing of worship because of Tammuz's blood. And then Easter, she proclaimed a 40 day period of time of sorrow each year prior to the anniversary of the death of Tammuz, right? Now, this is a season that a lot of people are even practicing today. During this time, there was no meat to be eaten. And this season is called Lent. Mm. Anybody ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. In fact, we're in Lent. A lot, of, a lot of churches are right now in mm -hmm. Lent, mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And Lent, what happens is, is the, one thing about Lent is there is no biblical or historical record of Christ or the apostles or anyone <laughs> in the early church participating in this season. You know what amazes me? How people would take and see because Jesus did certain things mm -hmm. that they think that we're supposed to some type of way deitize it. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus fa fasted for 40 days. Mm -hmm. Nowhere did he tell you to fast for 40 days. Mm -hmm. did, have anybody seen that in the Bible? Mm -hmm. You because you ain't Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're not Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? not and you're not going to get the results Jesus got. And so we have to stay in the house, and I say our lane. Amen. <laughs> and understand that we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. But we had to know that we're not Jesus. Amen. And what he did, we couldn't do. Say that. And that's why Amen. we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior. Amen. Because what we couldn't do, he did. Amen. 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 So we got this season called Lent where they put the, um, the ash. The ash. Wednesday they put the ashes on their forehead and you know the only time anyone threw ashes on themselves back in the in the OT in the Old Testament is when they were going through um, grieving they were grieving when it was uh, repenting of something or they, they you know they it was it was grief mm -hmm. Now, I ain't going through no grief. I ain't putting no ashes on my head because it doesn't represent anything for today. Correct. Amen. 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 Now, at this time, worshipers were to meditate upon the sacred mysteries of Baal and Tammuz and to make the sign of a tree in front of their hearts as they worship. <laughs> Now, 
the, the team. Huh? Now, in a certain church, they said it represents Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, I'm not jumping on any religions. All right? But you have to understand something. <laughs> the truth is the truth. Jesus didn't walk around doing this. Jesus didn't get over his food, get ready to pray and say. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I don't need to know. Even if it was a cross. <laughs> Even if the world of cross ain't nowhere in the scripture where it supports you praying, making a cross. We pray. That ain't how we pray. No. You know, we pray, we talk to Jesus just like we talk to one another. Amen. It's about a relationship. When Amen. I talk to you, I'm not making no zeros or no T's <laughs> or no W's. <laughs> Right? Because I have a relationship with Jesus. Right? Amen. 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 Now, so this stuff started coming into the church and, 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 and it was well accepted. And to this day, it's in the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. How did it get there? Mm -hmm. Why are we still doing it? How many churches you know going to open up Easter Sunday with an Easter egg hunt? I want my scramble too, sis. <laughs> Amen. I mean, there are things that are fun for the kids. I understand that. Right. They even do it at the White House. They had a little Easter egg roll where everyone has to get out there in the, in the, in the yard in the White House and they roll the Easter egg. They have a contest to see who wins. So this tradition is from the White House to where? The outhouse. <laughs> That's right, because it's safe. That's right, it sure does. Mm -hmm. Again, eggs are meant to be eaten. Yeah. You shouldn't be playing with your food. <laughs> All right. And so they also ate these sacred cakes with the marking of a T on them. And so even a lot of times when you get the um, when you get uh, you see even some of these communion these communion they have like a tea they got tea on tea cake. Tea cake. <laughs> 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 My grandma used to make some of them. Y'all keep making <laughs> y'all tea cake. <laughs> 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 Listen, the thing is, you know, like today, if you if you get some uh, get some communion and they got the tea on the bread, it, that's not what it's standing for, all right? You have to understand that the, the, the pagan holiday Easter was to get people off the focus mm -hmm. of doing what they were supposed to do for the Passover, mm -hmm. all right? Now, the Passover symbolically represented what Christ did for us in the resurrection. Amen. 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 So every year on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox, a celebration was made. And it's funny, y'all, because guess when we celebrate Easter? Hmm? We celebrate Easter every year on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring at every single year. We're going to hit the calendars um, in this study, and I'm going to show you all on the calendars when the next full moon is right before we have it's going to be a full moon, and guess what we're celebrating right after the full moon. Now, how did that happen? It's got a lot to do with the Gregorian calendar. Mm -hmm. A lot of things have changed. All right. So, So, in the pagan religion, Easter Sunday 
was something that was celebrated with rabbits, wow, <laughs> eggs, ham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they still doing it today. Yes. Girl, you know they couldn't. You ain't have them, don't you? <laughs> so, and, and the reason, you know why they eat the ham, right? Because that was the way Easter got a revenge, basically saying that, okay, because the pig killed my son. Yeah. All right. This is how I'm going to get, so this, we're going to make this a part of the holiday. Now you have to eat a pig. So you have to eat that Easter ham now. A lot of us can't eat no Easter ham right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can't eat a Sunday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Man. You can't eat a ham, period, because you can't eat pork. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us can't do that, right? Mm -hmm. So if we had to do that to celebrate the Christian Easter, which is the resurrection of Christ, Thank God for his grace because a lot of us will be out of place. Amen. 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 Okay. So let's move to the next slide. Now, by now we should have made the connection that paganism has infiltrated the contemporary Christian churches. And further study indicates that this paganism came in by way of the Roman Catholic system. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, I'm not jumping on the Catholic Church. You understand? But this is where the church started at, in Rome. It started, the first Christian church, the first church by where um, Gentiles were, the, were able to gather and were known as Christians was actually the Catholic Church. It was actually the Catholic Church. Okay, so everybody... At one time or another, whether you know it or not, we started off in the Catholic Church. It started off in the Catholic Church. And we're going to talk about how this happened. Okay? And the way we're going to find out how this happened is we got to go to the, uh, and I know this is hard to see because, but I sent y'all some emails and mm -hmm. y'all emails had. <laughs> she said, thank you, Lord. The seven churches in Revelation. The seven churches in Revelation. We're going to talk about one of these churches, right? The seven churches in Revelation refer to seven literal churches described in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. These early Christian churches were located in Asia. And they were located there during the era of the Roman Empire. Although the actual churches ceased to thrive in the centuries of, of uh, Muslim control after the Romans, the archaeologists uh, still, they still have archaeology gold. That's a big word, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but they have the remains of all seven locations still uh, existing today in uh, what we call present-day Turkey. Mm -hmm. So they still have the remains of those churches, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of these churches <laughs> allowed all this mess Easter, I-S-H-T-A-R to get mixed in with E-A-S-T E-R, mm -hmm. right? So let's go to Revelation chapter 2. Amen. Amen. Already there. And this is information. I'm, I'm, you know, like I said, we're not here to beat up on any church. Mm -hmm. You understand? But we need to know how this mess infiltrated the body of Christ. And how do people get to the point where they worship that more than they worship Christ? When it comes, especially when it comes to the time of resurrection. Amen. You know, it was about us being saved by his blood, being, being you know, our salvation came through that, through that process. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it didn't come through eggs, it didn't come through rabbits, it didn't come through ham, 
<laughs> Spare me them. <laughs> okay, so Revelation 12, are you there? Amen. Yeah. Revelation 12. I'm sorry. Revelation 2 and 12. Revelation 2 and 12. Amen. And I'm reading the New King James Version. Amen. Is that all right? Do y'all need me to read it? Amen. Amen. Is that all right? It says, And to the angel of the church of Pergamos writes, These things says he who has the sharp two-edged sword. Who is this? It's easy, y'all. It's in red. Jesus. Okay, well, it's Jesus. It's red. It's just, okay. Uh, <laughs> these things says he <laughs> who has a sharp two edged sword. Mm -hmm. Two edged sword is talking about Jesus, yeah. right? Amen. Amen. He says this I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, because you have you have there you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam. This is this pagan stuff that we're talking about right now. Who taught Bal Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel? to eat things, sacrifice to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Now, in um, other texts, you see Nicolaitans in other parts of the Bible, and it also calls them Hellenists. All right? Mm -hmm. Which things I hate. Now, you know it's got to be pretty strong for Jesus to say, yeah. which things I hate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said, repent! Or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Mm. He who has ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord that says to the churches today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, did y'all hear what we said about Antipas? Mm -hmm. We're going to have to talk about Antipas a little bit. We're going to be on this slide for a while. Okay. All right. We're going to talk about Antipas. Who was Antipas? Antipas. If you, as you go through there, you'll see that Antipas was a martyr, and he was the one who was dethroned. How was he dethroned? Because Satan, when it, what happened was Satan had him killed, mm. and Satan set his people on the throne. Now, a lot of people think that Satan, when he was cast down, he was cast to hell. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that Satan went to hell. Nope. Only people to say that is church folk. In fact, when it said it was cast down, he was cast where? On earth. To the earth. That's why the Bible says the spirit of Antichrist is acting out right now, today. It's on this earth. Hmm? And so what Satan did was by was his influence, he had Antipas, the man of God who was put up in the first church, killed, and he set his man on the throne. So we're going to talk about Antipas for a little bit. All right, We're not being away from the study, but we have to know how this stuff got into the church. Amen. And the only way we're going to know is because we've got to match it up with the Word. Amen. And so we, we have to see where Antipas, and we have to find out who Antipas actually was. Now Antipas, he was a disciple of the Apostle John, who was the bishop of the Church of Pergamos during the reign of Emperor Nero. 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 Now, during these times, everyone who would not offer sacrifice to, to the idols lived under threat of either exile or execution by order of the emperor. On the island of Patmos, the apostle John was in prison. So we see here, before we move on, that um, Antipas was actually uh, a disciple of John. And so John had actually set him up in the first church mm -hmm. as the bishop. 
So I guess you could say he was like the first pope. Well, no, I better not say Pope. You know why? Because actually this guy, his name, it actually means more like a rebellious type thing. He actually went against the Pope, you know, when we go in there. So I'm not going to say Pope, but he was the first bishop in the name of the dead. Right? He was the first bishop. Okay? Now, by his personal example, in firm faith, in constant preaching about Christ, and thus begin to turn the people to Pergamum from offering sacrifices to idols. This was this religion that they were doing, this pagan religion that the uh, Nicolaitans were doing. And they were offering sacrifices. You know, and, and this is just like now, when once Christ came, and you know, we moved to grace mm -hmm. out from under the law. Whereas People were still offering sacrifices, all right, under the law when we're under grace. Well, these people were worse than that because their sacrifices, and we're going to read down, we're going to see that they, they were making sacrifices to their gods. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, Easter, you know, she had Tammuz basically. Uh, Tammuz was became their god when he got killed. He became to them deity. The pagan priests, under the influence of Satan, accused the, accused Antipas for leading the people away from their ancestral gods, and they demanded that he stop preaching about Christ and offer sacrifices to the idols instead. Now we see this right now, if you go through the scriptures, you'll see where there were plenty of times where there were sacrifices being made to idols and they were trying to teach them, hey, don't make sacrifices to idols. This was in not just the New Testament, but this was happening in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Antipas calmly answered that he was not about to serve the demons that fled from him. And actually, that should, that should be all of us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because if the demons are afraid of you, then why are you scared of them? Mm -hmm. That's a question I ask folks. <laughs> They're running from him. And he's saying, hey, look, um, I'm not going to serve these demons. They're running from me. Why? Because I'm the man of God. And I have the authority mm -hmm. to cast them. I have the authority to bind. I have the authority to loose. Mm -hmm. Whatever I bind in heaven shall be bound where? On earth. Wherever I loose in heaven shall be loose where? On earth. He has given us the power to tread upon scorpions and serpents. All the power over Amen. the power of the enemy. Amen. Amen. And in no way can he hurt us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And Agnes knew who he was. Mm -hmm. Do you know who you are? Amen. 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 Do you know who you are? I do. <laughs> you know, this is funny because um, so I'm I'm home and someone rang my bell and I I, I answered the door and the, the kid said, "Hey, I saw a snake going from the street to your backyard." I said, "Okay, thank you." <laughs> I said, "The devil is a liar." I took out my lawnmower. <laughs> and I mowed the grass. Because I was going to kill it. It was not coming into my house. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I was claiming that it, that was not coming into my house. Because mm -hmm. like, and, and the funny thing was that what you just said. And that came into my head. I can step on scorpions. And I can step on the snake's head. Amen. And I can conquer. Because they ain't going to get me. Mm -hmm. I mowed that grass the front and the back. But you have authority. You know, Amen. You know, a lot of times we, we fear things that God has given us authority over. Amen. 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 And if we simply use the authority God has given us, you know. It will make a way for us. The problem is, 
a lot of people don't know the authority that they have. Amen. Why? Because they don't know who they are <laughs> in Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. knew who he was. He was a disciple of John's. Amen? Mm -hmm. And John was a disciple of who? Right. Christ. Mm -hmm. So he knew. He knew. And uh, as he was set up as the first pastor or first bishop, he knew about his authority. He didn't have no problem. In fact, this place they were in was so evil. I mean, Nero ran things with an iron fist. Mm -hmm. But they had this pagan worship of Easter that had infiltrated, you know, that was, that was uh, well, it didn't infiltrate the church at that time until after, as we see, Antipas got killed. Mm -hmm. Okay? But Antipas said, he said he worshiped the Lord Almighty, and he would continue to worship the Creator of all with his only begotten Son in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So he wouldn't bow down to what they were doing in uh, the you know the Nicolaitan Church. He wouldn't he wouldn't bow down to what the Nicolaitans were doing. He wouldn't bow down to the paganism that they had going forth. Right. He wouldn't bow down to Easter. Mm -hmm. I S H T. Amen. Are. Amen. This is an awesome study, and there's so much in it. You just have to listen and take it in. Just like you said, here, you wouldn't bow down to the pagan, you know, paganism. I'll put it away if that can be a word or whatever. That's a word. But however, today, people are giving into this by way of, you know, the holidays, the pagan holidays, okay? The Easter, we, okay, we talk about the origin of Easter. So many people are still running around, and I know you said this earlier, you know, eggs are good. They're good for eating. Mm -hmm. But so many people put so much emphasis on the coloring of the eggs because it's, you know, the colors are attractive, you know, and, and, and they get overwhelmed by the looks of this thing, and, you know, and, and it, it, it takes your mind off of the actual true reason for the resurrection of Christ. It's a distraction. Mm -hmm. It's a marketing tool. It's a worldly <laughs> marketing tool. The world is getting rich off of people that claim to be true Christians, mm -hmm. but yet the true Christians are losing focus. They're becoming in debt behind these things. This is all a trick of the enemy. All the trick of the enemy because people do not know the origin of Easter. They do not know the true meaning of the resurrection of Christ and the similarities and, and the, the closeness in dates. Yeah. Amen. And we're going to talk about that close and how these dates yes. are so close. Amen. And uh, <laughs> 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 you already eat ham. You eat that dog on ham. <laughs> Look, if you, if you eat ham, you ain't demonic. No. <laughs> it's all right if you eat ham. Just know that you ain't eating ham thinking that it has anything to do with the resurrection of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. It has nothing to do with the Christian holiday of Easter, which is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But, but it has everything to do because they were commanded to eat this pig because the pig killed Tammuz. Right. And Tammuz was their so called god. It was Easter's, <laughs> her, Easter's son. Um, go ahead, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know if you already covered this or if I'm like way in advance or if you're going to cover it, but so why is Easter, R E A S T E R, why do we call it Easter? If it's so close to Ishtar, Ishtar, which is pronounced Easter, right? They both pronounce it. Did it mean it's not as close? Why is it so close? Yeah. Because our our Easter is symbolic right. to uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? But Satan is always put in a, a counterfeit. There you go. There you go. He's always done that. He's done that from the beginning. No matter what it was, just like just like it started with Adam and Eve. You know, he he asked Adam and Eve to, or he asked Eve to take the fruit and eat it. And if she ate it, she would be like God. She was the seed. She was already like God. 
And that's what Satan always wants to do. He wants to get us, get us distracted and get us off track. He wants us to, to actually go after something. As soon as she ate it, she became less like God. <laughs> she was already like God. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is with us. You know, Satan always puts something else there. Mm -hmm. And you have a choice. Either you're going to go with what God put there, or you're going to go with what Satan put there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they're going to be neck and neck. If you go back and look at the bloodlines, the God, the uh, godly bloodline that went Adam, Eve, Seth, mm -hmm. and look at the ungodly blood bloodline, Adam, Eve, Cain, mm -hmm. you will go through there and you will see that there are names that are exact. Mm -hmm. Going all the way through. There are names that are exact. Why? Because the enemy always want to duplicate what 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 God is, there it is. He want to imitate. I'm sorry, not duplicate. He want to imitate mm -hmm. what God has made. Why? Because he is an imitator and he is not a creator. Amen. 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 God is the only creator. And guess what? He gave you authority to create also. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But we have to know who we are. Amen. Amen. So the pagan priest, all right, we, we move away from one. Okay, so the pagan priests, right, they responded angrily by their gods, exist, they, they, they responded, they were mad, right, they were responding angrily because uh, they wanted to talk about their gods existed from old. <laughs> well, Christ, he wasn't from of old, but he was crucified under Pontius Pilate as a criminal, right? He wasn't one of those gods of old. If anybody knew anything about the, uh, um, and I talked about this, I think, before, uh, Egypt, when Egypt and Moses was going up against, uh, Moses, God was on Moses' side, and he was going against Pharaoh. You know, Egypt had worshipped 10 other gods. You know, the plagues that Egypt, yes. Egypt uh, received were plagues that mocked all of their gods. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So everything that they, everything they considered a God, that's what God used to mock them. <laughs> it's funny. Antipas replied that the pagan gods were the work of human hands and that everything said about them was, was filled with iniquities and vices. He steadfastly confessed his faith in the Son of God. Are you confessing your faith in the Son of God? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. <clears throat> well, what happened there was the enraged pagan priest, they dragged Antipas to the temple of Artemis and threw him into a red hot copper basin shaped like a bull. Mm -hmm. Now, how long had they been making bull shaped things <laughs> <laughs> and worshiping it? How long have they been making this stuff? It's just crazy. All the way from the beginning, they were doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just, it's nuts. And sure enough, they threw him in there. And it, it, it was a place where they usually put the sacrifices, uh, their sacrifices to their idols. So in this red hot furnace, the martyr Antipas prayed loudly to God, asked him to receive his soul and to strengthen the faith of the Christians. He went to the Lord peacefully as if he was going to sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A disciple of John, y'all. A disciple of John, John, the disciple of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we had to learn about Antipas. We had to find out, okay, well, what happened to the first church? How did this happen? How in the world did the first church get infiltrated? Well, the spirit of the uh, conservative traditions of men is what made Antipas a, mur a martyr. And Antipas represents the historical sense of the Reformation. Pergamos represents the Church of Rome, dating from the time they instituted the Nicolaitans, or Hellion, the system of separatism. Well, I'm sorry, of separation of the priests and loyalty, and throughout their history with giving heed to seducing spirits 
and the doctrine of demons. Now, that's Revelation. If we keep reading Revelation 2 and 15, you'll see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Antipas represents the opposition to the excess of Rome and the, the tradition of men, which led to the Protestant Reformation. Now, when we talk about Protestant Reformation, what is the Protestant Reformation? We're going to talk, we're going to get a little deep into that, okay? Okay. But everyone heard of Protestant. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, back then, there were one or two things. Catholic and Protestant. Because the Catholic Church had now been infiltrated. And there was a lot of evil things going on in the Catholic Church. I'm not saying that there's a lot of evil things going on right now. <laughs> I, I like this new Pope they got. You know what I mean? I really do. It ain't his fault. You know, we can't blame it on him. Because this started way before he got set up. Mm -hmm. And so he's just in a bad situation. But understand, if you weren't Catholic, you were considered Protestant. <laughs> Protestant is if you look at the root word protest they protested what the catholic church was doing because of the evil things that they saw that was happening in there so they broke off on their own mm -hmm. and that's how we got the protestant church you know the military for a while had either the catholic or protestant services mm -hmm. remember that mm -hmm. yeah and then a few years ago they allowed everything in now yeah. Just, it don't matter. You can worship trees, and this this is they have to honor it in the military. Now. <laughs> the Protestant Reformation was a series of events that happened in the 16th century in the Christian Church because of corruption in the Catholic Church. Some people saw that the way it worked needed to change. People like uh, Desiderius Erasmus, he started Christian humanism, all right? There was another guy named Heldrich Zwingli. He started the Swiss Protestant movement. Y'all gonna hear some names that y'all know of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> another guy named Martin Luther. What did he start? The Lutheran. the Lutheran Church, right? Mm -hmm. What about John Calvin? Baptist. He started the Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. They saw the corruption and they tried to stop it, but this led to a religious split in the church. <clears throat> and it's something because you know we still have this split mm -hmm. right now. All these years that went by, you know, hundreds of years, thousands of years. Here we are, still split. Still split. So, even though we're split into all these different denominations, they consider us Protestants. Okay? Because we protest against what the first church was doing. Mm -hmm. The evil stuff that was had infiltrated the church. The man that was set up in Antipas place to start running things. And what they did was they allowed the doctrine of the Nicolaitans to enter into the church. And that's what a lot of this Easter is. Paganism. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, this is how the uh, pagan tradition and rituals infiltrated the Christian church. Now we know. Now, thank God we're under grace. Amen. 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 So if you've been participating in this type of worship during Easter, you won't go to hell as long as you know what the true Easter is all about. Okay? Amen. You need to know what the true Easter is all about. Don't be blaming the pastor if your children don't know what the true Easter is all about. If you got them worshiping eggs and ham and stuff like that and little rabbits and all that stuff, that, that is on you. Today you got the truth. Amen. 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 So what does this tradition of rabbits, chicks, 
Easter hams, sunrise services. What does all that have to do with the true Easter? Not a thing. That's why the scripture tells us that Jesus said it himself. The traditions of men make the word of God a normal act. And this is what they were trying to do. Satan has always attacked the word of God. Mm-hmm. When he went to, to uh, Eve, what did he attack? The word of God. Word of God. Mm-hmm. Has God said? <laughs> Surely. <laughs> so he's always been trying to attack them. And to this day, you know, the scripture talks about how um, it talks about the different soils. Remember how the scripture talked about the different mm-hmm. soils mm-hmm. and how the seeds planted in the different mm-hmm. soils and mm-hmm. one is choked out yeah. and the other one, as soon as they receive it, the wind comes and blow it away. It, it talks about one that was put on shallow ground and so it never got root. This is how the church is. This is why, this is what, you know, every Bible study in every church should be packed out. Should be. Amen. Amen. Should be People should be, be standing outside trying to figure out, well, where am I sit at? Right. Amen. But they ain't like that. You know why they ain't like that? Infiltration. Infiltration. Because the enemy has made it look good, or how can I say, make, uh, made other things look good. And say if you do these other things, oh, it don't matter. Mm-hmm. It don't matter. You, you know what? God understands. Yes, God do understand. That you choose to do something over that. Amen. Glad you used that. Same way the serpent, you know, uh, deceived Eve, and and when he said it, she saw that the fruit was pleasing to the eye and good for food. That's what people see right now. The distractions that the devil throw out at you is pleasing to our flesh, our sight. It sounds good to our ears. Oh, it smells so, he smells so good, she smells so good. A distraction to get us off the focus of what God has got for us. God has something for us in every area of our lives, but there's areas that you are not receiving it because you've been distracted and deceived. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen. Exactly. That's exactly. You know, and, and, and it's sad because a lot of people in the body of Christ, we're, I agree, you know, there's a lot of people who are physically, they have some physical issues in the body of Christ. And there's a lot of people who have a spiritual uh, issue or, or mental issue in the body of Christ. But if I ask people about who has a financial issue, you get 98% yeah, of the body of Christ raising their hand. <laughs> and why is that? Because they're, dist- they're distracted. Mm-hmm. The enemy has made everyone believe that it's better to invest in everything else except for the kingdom when you should invest in the kingdom first That's right. and watch how everything else grows. That's right, amen. Exactly right. Everybody worried about the stock market and everything that's going on because of the coronavirus yeah. right now? People of God, like that, you have no business being worried. That's right. Amen. Amen. I thought Jesus was the one that was taking care of us. Amen. Amen. Now I don't know about you all. Y'all do what y'all want. I invest in the kingdom. Amen. 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 I, you know, and I know some people don't like it online, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm the tiger. Amen. 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 I'll be tied until I have my last breath. Amen. 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 And God has opened up the floodgates of heaven. Mm-hmm. And he has poured out a blessing upon us yeah. when there's not room enough to receive. Amen. 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 Go ahead, sir. Amen. Just like you. Just like you were saying. Mm-hmm. You know, you go to First Peter five and seven. Can't he said, cast your cares upon mm-hmm. him because he cared for you. Amen. He's talking about your worries, mm-hmm. your fear, yeah. your insecurity. Yeah. And, and, your, and if you don't trust, you're going to trust. But he said, cast your cares upon him. He's not just saying it just to be talking. Right. He's serious <laughs> about it. And when you learn to cast your cares upon him, then you start developing trust. Because mm-hmm. you'll see what he'll do for you. Amen. Amen. 
it just it makes me go into the mindset of you know where where are we today you know this whole world is shutting down because there's a pandemic <laughs> happening right now because of the coronavirus mm -hmm. yeah. Me and me and first lady talking about it on the way up here. I said, you know, I ain't yeah. scared of no coronavirus. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. ain't afraid no. The, the scripture says he right. heals all of our diseases. Right. Amen. 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 You know, and, and you know, I, I don't want to give it to nobody, no, but I ain't afraid of it. Amen. 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 And neither none of us should be afraid of it. Amen. 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 And, and it is shutting the entire world down yeah. because people don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. well, we, we can't do this, we can't do that. Now, don't get me wrong, we do need to be smart about things. Right. Correct. Yeah. Right. Because Correct. there are, there are Correct. people who, are, who have physical issues and this, this, this is not good for them. Right. Right. So we need to be smart. You can't go get it and then, you know, just because you're healthy, you take it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's why they shut down all the nursing homes and the VAs nursing homes and stuff like that, you just can't go up in there because you, it'll cause big problems right, because right. They, they have health issues. Amen. Amen. So we have to be we have to be wise, but at the same time we're we're being wise, we have to realize that hey, you know what, I don't fear this. Amen. 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 Because Amen. I know that God was on my side. Amen. 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 That's right. That's right. And that's what and it's the same way. Just it's it's a big distraction. And uh, that's what great, you know, that's the same thing I talked about with finances. It's a big distraction. Hey, me and first lady had to go through those distractions mm -hmm. because I was trying to make a decision. Look, are we going to tithe or are we going to eat? Are we going to tithe or are we going to do? Who are we going to do? You know, but that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to look at, well, if I don't eat, then I might die of starvation. And death was the thing that Satan had over us. Mm -hmm. But Jesus yeah, with that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's death, right. Is no, death is not even an issue anymore because Jesus whipped him because he whipped him. We have whipped him. Amen. Right, amen. That's right. So now all we have to do is trust in him. That's right. Amen. So when we made that decision, look, okay, well, we're going to go ahead and do it. 1996. Amen. We decided to do it. And <coughs> it didn't make sense. Uh, <laughs> Because we had we were, we were having more month than money, it makes sense. So we were, I mean, we had nothing to lose. We already didn't have enough money to make money anyway. Well, what do we got to lose? Might as well take try God in His word, right? Amen. So we all out there. You ain't got nothing to lose. You need to just go ahead and try God in His word. Quit messing around. Amen. 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 And I think that because. Once we tried God, and he said, prove me now, test me. This is one of the only areas where God tells you to test him. Amen. And when we tested him at this, don't you know that he passed the test with flying confidence? Amen. Amen. And we have not missed the time since that day that we made the decision in 96. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And God has blessed us every single day. Year after year after year. Amen. 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 And so I said all that to match it up with this message here or this teaching so that you can understand that the enemy put a distraction mm -hmm. right next to our Easter. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the world and a lot of the church have fallen for the distraction. Instead of actually worshiping the resurrection of Christ. Amen. 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 I have to stop here at the same time next week. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.